Hi, Dale from Danger Mountain Bike Bronco. Welcome to my video review for the Goose Gear rear plate system for the four-door Bronco. I've got a four-door Bronco Badlands here. You have to forgive the dirt because uh, we just got back from snow wheeling a couple days ago in Big Bear, California and had a blast. But people have been asking me to do a review about the Goose Gear plate system that allows you to get a flat mounting surface um, so you can mount things like fridges, fridge slides, cargo boxes, full storage, even full kitchens. So make sure to keep watching the video and I'll talk to you about both the pros and the cons of the cargo system, why I chose this one for my build. Why the Goose Gear? Why did I choose the Goose Gear? Well, Goose Gear's got a solid reputation in the off-road SUV overland camping world for many, many years for making quality, durable products that stand the test of time. Uh, having seen friends with Jeeps and uh, different vehicles built out with Goose Gear full storage systems in the back, um, I've seen them put to really good use and I've seen them uh, provide lots of convenience for, for people. Um, that's why I decided to look at Goose Gear initially. I always approach these choices and build for what will work for me. Uh, of course, everyone's different. There are also a few other options for rear cargo management for the Bronco from companies like American Adventure Lab with the mass platform system and Diabolical Inc. Uh, is offering a rear floor slide system as well, just to name a few. I wanna show you guys how to remove the Bronco factory floor and how to install the Goose Gear rear plate. So first, um, there's four attachment points here. You can see that I've already removed all of the screws and the tie down hooks from three of them because you don't wanna watch me do this for five minutes. It's really quick though. Um, so let me pause the camera. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So it's really simple. All you do is you pull the hook up, you grab the plastic in the front, you pull it back, and you just snap this off. You'll see that there's two plastic tabs here on the end that fit right into this section here. And then these plastic tabs just grab onto the hook right there. So that's how it sits in the factory. Again, really easy to pull out. You just flip this up, get a little lever. You could also take a screwdriver and pop it out. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a ratchet with a 10 mil socket to remove these two bolts here. Four of these locations on the factory floor, each has two bolts. Really simple to do. Um, I'm gonna get them started and uh, we'll fast forward through the video here so you don't have to watch this. Once you remove these two 10 mil headed bolts, you just pull these right out. These are nice heavy duty hooks. Um, I would hold on to these because you'll probably be able to use these on your Bronco, maybe even on your roof rack, uh, anywhere that you need a tie down, you probably find a use for these. So I'm gonna hold on to these. Okay, next, we're just gonna pull the factory floor out. It's really simple to do. You just lift it up. And then pull it out. If you're curious what it looks like without the floor, you can see here we have our jack access, we have our storage access, and again, here's where we're gonna bolt the goose gear in using the factory holes that were there. The cool thing about this cargo tray is it's rather big, and the best part about it is with the goose gear, with the either passenger or driver's side hatch access, we're able to still use all of this storage, which is a great thing. Okay, next we're gonna install the goose gear. And as you can see, it comes in one piece. You don't have that floppy uh, little uh, hatch access like the factory floor does. You can also see here that all these inserts are built really well. They use top quality materials. And you may be able to see or not, but the thickness of the wood. It looks like it's about half inch uh, ply, half inch ply coated with a super durable coating. So again, just one piece. And as you can see, it just drops right into place and it's a beautiful fit, um, custom made for this. I've already had this in my Bronco. I actually uninstalled it 
to show you guys how to take the other one out and reinstall it. So again, it's so easy to do. I was willing to uninstall it for you so I could show you how to install it. We're gonna attach the included hardware from Goose Gear into the two holes here, the two holes here, the two holes at the back, and the two holes there in the back. You can see the outline that's on this now is from where my fridge slide was sitting. And this is dust from being off-road. And then you can see here that we have passenger side hatch, and then we have the goose gear jack access. Now this is really important to note there are four screws into this, and this thing just slides out. But the way to slide it out is to undo all these screws. Now, if you're going to mount a fridge on the driver's side or the passenger side, depending on where you get the rear hatch access, it's important that you remove the screw that's going to be covered up. So you can see here that my fridge covers up this section here, and I have a little bit of room to get this bolt out, this bolt out, and this bolt out. And I'll show you later, once I install the fridge, we bolt this floor down, I install the fridge, I'll show you how we pull that thing out. So again, five mil Allen, included hardware with a washer. Really important that you use the washers, of course, and they provide all that hardware for you. Pro tip, if you don't have one of these dishes from Harbor Freight, they're like five bucks, magnetic bolts, these are key when you're doing any work around the truck to just toss your bolts in. Really, really great to have. What I like to do is I like to go through and just get all of these kind of lined up and hand started. So that way, if you need to shift the plate around to line them up, you can do that. Again, I'm not gonna bore you with watching me put down uh, bolts into this thing, so I'll fast forward through this. Okay, so you can see that I've installed all of these bolts. Now, you don't have to go crazy tight on these. Don't over torque them. Don't get all ham-fisted caveman style on them. You don't want to break your inserts. You don't want to break uh, the goose gear. So yeah, just tighten them up snug. Thing will fit tight. All right, so as I was saying before, it's really important that you whatever side you decide to mount your fridge on, that you remove the top corner bolt here. These bolts are what hold this in and keep it from rattling. So you can see here that I've already loosened this one up and you can see it just rattles around. So it's important that you have at least three of them in and because you're gonna put the corner of your fridge or your drawer system from Goose Gear is gonna cover up that bolt, it's important that you pull that out. You wanna undo these bolts from the jack access. It only takes a second. So even if you're like, you need access to this because you got a flat or whatever, um, it, it's not a big deal. That being said, if you're running a lifted vehicle like I am, the jack that the, you get with the Bronco sucks. So you probably want something better anyway. You can see, I have to lift the handle on my slider in order to pull it out, but this will give you access to the jack and everything that you need. Again, it just slides inside, and then to put it back, you just line up the bolt holes and put those bolts back in. So super simple, easy jack access, get it done in two minutes. It goes flush to the back of the existing factory floor. And what I love about this is that it raises the factory floor up a little bit. You'll see here that before I had this, I had the fridge slide bolted down to the original factory floor. And if you look up really close, you can see here where the fridge slide, every time I drug it out, it was starting to cut into this plastic here. And that's because the factory floor sits a little bit lower than the goose gear does. And so it allowed this every time I slid it out to run into that. You know, the rear plate was exactly what I needed and what I was looking for, a flat, durable surface that I didn't have to build myself that looked factory, or in this case, better than factory. 
you know, I needed to mount my fridge and my slide and have also have movable tie down points. You can see here in the corners, I've included these tie down hooks um, with a plastic washer underneath. So I didn't do anything to the, the rear plate itself, but you can see that I can move these anywhere on virtually any of these holes to create tie down points for my needs based on how I'm packing my gear out at any given time. And frankly, the factory floor just didn't offer that. You know, with the factory floor, you had four tie down points and that was it. Um, they were sturdy and they were, they were nice in that regard, but they didn't offer the kind of versatility that the, the Goose Gear rear plate offers. You know, since every trip is different, I don't take the st same stuff all the time. For example, if I'm off-roading in the desert or rock crawling, you know, I don't need or want all my camping gear bouncing around. So this is a setup that's super versatile for my needs. So if I want to add additional tie downs in here, you can see here, I've taken a, an M6 eye bolt, got from Amazon, super cheap. Got some plastic washers so I can protect the bottom of this as we screw it down. But you can see here, see here I put one here, I put one in the back corner and I can essentially put these anywhere I want, just creating whatever kind of tie down points you want. So if I want to strap this down, I just clip into the, the back and then we just tie it down like that. Of course, you'd put another one from there to there, depending on how big your particular, uh, you know, your storage is for that day. Um, you can strap it down however you like. So the rear access hatch is a nice feature to have. Um, you can see you simply just click it and it, it pulls out. Um, there's quite a bit of storage down inside of it. You can see here. It goes back pretty far. It goes all the way underneath to the other side. You can see I'm, my arm's in there almost up to my elbow. And so there's a lot of room in there for you to store stuff. Um, again, it, uh, it, also, it also locks, which is a nice feature. And they make it so you can put it on either the passenger side or the driver's side. You just have to choose that option when you order it. That allows you to decide like where you want to install a fridge. Because once you install the fridge, you're not going to be able to access that hatch. Another thing I really like is this is my daily driver. You know, I want to be able to pull stuff in and out, be able to uh, have stuff in here based on what I need for the day and what I don't need for the day. What's really cool is in order to pull this fridge out, I simply just undo the straps, pull the slide all the way out. And you can see here that there's a single bolt here, single bolt on that side, one in the back and one right there. And then it's simply just pulls right out. And so in about, you know, five minutes, I can pull that entire fridge out and then have my uh, rig uh, to use for whatever I want for that day. So if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're considering buying a Goose Gear uh, rear plate system. And I'm sure there's a couple of you in here going, why would you buy a rear plate system? Why wouldn't you just head to Home Depot, get yourself a sheet of half inch ply, grab yourself some inserts, get yourself some Rhino bed spray, come home, cut it out, hit it with your router, put the inserts in, spray it up, and mount it into your vehicle. And although I consider myself a half-assed woodworker, um, my time's valuable and I wanna definitely spend more time in the dirt in my Bronco than building stuff for my Bronco. The other part of that is every project that you decide to take on, you need to go into it knowing that it's probably gonna take you twice as long, cost you twice as much, and you're probably not gonna be happy with the results when it's done at the end of the day. And for me, I wanted a floor that looked factory, and in this case, I think it looks better than factory. So what don't I like about the Goose Gear rear plate? I think the thing that's gonna be the biggest factor for most people is gonna be price, right? This thing's not cheap, you know, $595 if you pick it up from Goose Gear, $645 if you have it shipped. So no doubt about it, price is a factor, but you are paying for hand-built, custom-made quality items made here in the USA, and I like that. But uh, nonetheless, uh, 
price is a factor for most people. The other important factor is uh, wait time. You know, because Goose Gear custom builds all of their products, they don't have them sitting in the warehouse waiting to ship out. Um, if they do, it's rare. Uh, I waited about three months for this, and so that's quite a long time to wait uh, for a product. So you need to definitely plan that into your build. Like I was telling you before, um, I needed to mount my fridge before I got the rear plate, and by doing so, I ran into some issues using the factory uh, plate. So do I love it? And is it worth it? Yeah, for sure. You know, overall, I'm very happy with the rear plate solution. You know, Goose Gear has a reputation in off-road and overland community for quality products that, you know, stand the test of time and the abuse that we put them through. You know, and this is high quality, even if it is a bit overpriced, but we all know the overland Bronco tax is high. It is exactly what I expected, you know. It served me well for several months and several trips, and it's super durable. I love the product, and I highly recommend it to others who may be on the fence. So thanks for watching. Hope you found value in this video, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again. Hope to see you out on the trail.